In August of 2018, the Pennsylvania Attorney General released a report of around 300 priests who had been credibly accused of sexual assault against minors. Now that list is not 100% accurate and has, it has since been redacted, but many of the stories I believe are credible because of the documentation from the diocese. You can download the report and uh, it's the stories are pretty disgusting like it's it's pretty shocking it's it's worse than tv shows basically <laughs> like it's it's worse than you know r-rated movies so yeah i mean if you want to be shocked or if you've maybe you've already read it um i mean i have a link below for you to download it if you really want to do that but anyway I did read through it. I wanted to see, you know, the extent of just the the accusations and many of the priests have already died so they can't defend themselves. But when there's documentation of abuse settlement payouts, that's pretty serious and that's as good of a, almost as good of a fact as you need. So, one common theme that I noticed among the grand jury report was Consistently, whenever priests were caught and settlements were paid out for sexual assault, many of these priests were sent to different um, psychological rehab facilities. One name that kept coming up was St. Luke's Institute. It is located in Silver Springs, Maryland, near Washington, D.C. Now, on St. Luke's website, uh, it says that they provide rehabilitation to priests, deacons, and religious, and it says clients come to us for help with recovery from challenges such as, you know, many different psychological effects, anxiety, addiction, depression, and at the end it's, it lists sexual issues. So the leadership at St. Luke's uh, has been pretty bad. Um, I saw an article on Catholic culture written by Phil Lawler and he wrote about you know the one uh, person in charge of St. Luke's in 2013 was charged with financial misappropriations he also had some sexual improprieties which were not actually criminal offenses but you know the financial thing got him to jail some of them had homosexual tendencies um, that was kind of a big problem if you look up St. Luke's, if you Google it, you'll eventually find like a lot of the priests there tend to be homosexual. Anyway, the priests were sent to St. Luke's and after they had completed their treatment or whatever it's called, they were returned to the diocese with a report from St. Luke's. Now, I don't know very much about the mind of criminals. But I do know that in some of these treatment facilities, if they have, I mean, I guess you would call pedophilia an addiction. I mean, I don't really know the specifics of it. I don't know the psychology behind it too much. But I do know that whenever these priests were sent to St. Luke's, they were returned to the diocese. And many of them, like, that didn't solve the problem for a lot of them. You know, it, it was just a vacation for them. They were able to... I guess take relax enjoy a nice vacation and then come back and do what they were accustomed to doing which was uh, commit these crimes against children in August of 2018 there was an article written by a journalist from the York Daily Record York Pennsylvania he investigated St. Luke's Institute and he spoke with a spokesperson from St. Luke's and he has some interesting results here. I encourage you to check out the article which has been posted below. So St. Luke's is a Catholic run organization. Um, I think that's why they receive preference from many of these dioceses that sent their abuser priests for rehab there. Now there were several instances where 
priests were sent to St. Luke's for pedophilia in the 1990s. St. Luke's reported back to the diocese on several occasions that priests were not fit for active ministry and that they should be kept out of contact with minors. And the diocese ignored that information and put them into a parish. And you'll never guess which diocese it was. It was Pittsburgh, and the bishop was Donald Worrell. So the reporter of this article interviewed a spokesperson for St. Luke's, and the spokesperson said, St. Luke's provided external information to the diocese so they could make the right steps. By sending people to treatment, you're giving them treatment that will hopefully end the abuse. So what that means is St. Luke's thinks that they will bring the priest in, evaluate them, give the information back to the diocese and say, okay, now they're good. At least that's how I interpret it. And that's not good because if you're taking a priest who had, who has molested or um, sexually assaulted someone doesn't even mean that's a child, even an adult. They need to go to jail. These abuser priests, they're a financial drain to the diocese because what they do is they cost a lot in lawsuits and it's going to cost a lot of money to send them to St. Luke's the Treatment Center. You need to give up on these people as diocesan priests. There's no excuses. That's it. Once these priests go to jail, then once and after they're released from prison, the diocese should then just help them figure out what they're going to do with the rest of their life, and they shouldn't be in a diocese. So St. Luke's looks like it's part of the problem and not the solution.